Well, good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Bare Bones. I know what you're thinking. Where the, where the heck have you been? And uh, well, I, I I took a week off in RL to do a few things, and then I uh, uh, in between seasons, and then about three weeks ago I started this video, and this video took a lot longer to do than I thought it was. So it's also really long, and I decided not to break it up because. I figure what you could do is you could you could watch the analytics and then if you're only interested in spear sergeants skip ahead to the spear sergeant uh, portion and then watch that or if you're at home on a sunday drinking coffee and you got an hour you know and the kids are fighting in the background you need my soothing voice to you know move move you forward in your day then you can watch it all at once so what what have i done here is it i've taken the uh, uh analytic portion and then i've got a uh after the analytics, I've got a testing phase, and this is where I've taken various units and I've basically run them over with Calvary. And then after that, I've got a little bit of gameplay footage of each video, and then I have a discussion, right? And then recommendations. Now, the, uh, the discussion and the recommendations were all written at the same time as the analytics, and then I went and did the gameplay. And the reason I did that is, is as I looked at the analytics, I thought, okay, this is how these units ought to play with the way all of their bonuses worked, their unit traits worked, their, um, you know, the doctrines, everything I'd plugged into them. I said, okay, this is, must be how they, they go. So I wrote the discussion and the recommendations based on that. And the reason I did that is because I knew after going through the play, when I come out the other end, uh, is my mind going to be changed? And I wanted to see what the differences were. So when you see me go through the discussion, remember the text was written before and the voice is after. And I'm going to remind you that, hey, remember this was written prior to. And I'll be saying things like, okay, I decided this unit was really good at X. And do I think that still? And I'll be either saying, yes, I do, or no, I don't, right? So th those are the things I, I really, I want you to keep cognizant of, of, uh, of what's going on here. Now, um, as as per normal, here are your timestamps, and you're going to see there's a lot of them, right? And so uh, let's just take a minute to, to take a look at those, and then we'll get we'll get right into it after that, because I want you to be able to skip ahead to what you want to see. And, and like I said, you can see that I've got the the, um, the Imperial Spearman testing gameplay discussion, and then the Spear Sergeant testing gameplay and discussion, and they're all going to be like that. So there's going to have the, the the testing gameplay discussion, and then the next one will carry forward. So um, let's, uh, let's get started. So I'm gonna start just by showing you the veterans trees that I, I use. Now, I'm, um, I am going to go in depth to what is in these trees a little later, but I just want to show you uh, a visual of which line I went down, right? So you can see I went the top line with the maidens, the top lines with the stalwarts bottom line with the uh, spear sergeants and you're going to see i took the bottom defensive line with the imperial spear men so next we're going to look at the unit trees and you're going to see here that um i i maxed out uh the spear sergeants unit tree because that also carries over to the stalwarts and i put some points into the uh imperial spear guard now you'll notice that uh the first one is sergeancy's oath which gives an extra 100 block uh, to the unit and to the stalwarts. Now, the thing about what you're looking at here is if it is if reflected in the unit card, and this goes for the veterancy tree as well, I cover that in the unit card analytics. If it's not reflected in the unit card, I'm going to cover it separately in another slide. So that goes for the Imperial Spear Guard as well, which as you can see, I, I don't have as much in let's let's move on to doctrines and as you can tell by my imperial spearmen here i call them spear guards because that's what they used to be called uh, i don't really have much in uh, but if it's reflected in the unit card then uh, it's covered there and if it's not reflected in the unit card then i'll cover it in that other uh analytical slide now as for the spear sergeants there's two epic doctrines there that are not usual one is 150 health every second for 10 seconds and the other is increases block by 400. Now these are not reflected in the unit card, so I will cover them in the, the other slide. So now looking at the uh, Stalwarts doctrines, you'll notice that these are actually pretty decent doctrines. Uh, 
they're all designed to take damage better and do more damage to units, not heroes. And that's because they don't have a cover me command. Um, looking at the maidens, you're going to notice that, uh, again, there's a, a shield doctrine that reduces uh, damage by increasing defenses and the guardian doctrine, which allows me to use the guardian uh, more often. And again, it does have the assassination doctrine. That's because I've got cover me command. And again, I'm going to cover these uh, more appropriately in the uh, um, non-unit card videos. Now looking here, you're going to see my uh, unit cards. Now, this is pretty damn hard to read. So what I've done is I've separated all of this information out into this. So this should be easier to, to, to track. All right, so enough of the preamble. Let's just take a look at the very first uh, analytical slide, and that's the basic unit card wall comparison. Now, uh, a few things to note is that um, you'll see the stats on the left. That's health, strength, leadership, speed, obviously. And then the, the other ones are piercing armor pen, slashing armor pen, blunt armor pen, piercing damage, slashing damage, blunt damage, piercing defense, slash defense, blunt defense, and then you're going to see the score. Now, what is the score? You'll notice behind each of the actual um, stats, there's a little number in brackets. Now, that is where it sits for among the four, right? So if you look at health, shield maidens have 11,939 health and a two. Well, that's because the stalwarts have more, 12,134, and the spear sergeants have the worst. So as you go down those stat lines, you're going to see which one actually sits better in the stats. And the score is all of those stats added up and divided. Now, you'll notice that there's NA on the shield mating uh, at slashing damage and slashing pen because the other three don't have it. And really, the, the, the tree that I went with the shield maidens, it's all designed around the spear. So you shouldn't be using the, the, the sword that often. I do use it because the shield maidens are just awesome. But it's this whole idea is around the walls, right? So as we, as we look at these, it, it should give you the basic idea of where everything sits in comparison to everyone else. And you can see, for example, you know, the leadership cost is there, uh, the strength of the unit, how many guys, and the speed. And you know, the maidens are the, are the fastest and the Imperial Spirit Guards or men are the slowest. Um, now, you'll notice under the maidens, the piercing armor pen, there's a secondary number there. That number is because at the very end of their unit tree, uh, there's a plus 30% to pen if they're holding the spear. So um, if they're not holding the spear, then they don't get that. But again, it doesn't matter. But I thought I'd put it in any in, in way. Now, looking at piercing damage, you're going to see that, uh, you know, maidens are second. The better ones are the sergeants. But again, there's some caveats to this. This is just the raw stats. There are um, traits and abilities in the unit tree and uh, in the veterancy tree that adjust all these things. So let's take a look at those and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice when you when you look at this particular slide is that this is the, um, when you're looking at the unit card, these are the little, you know, abilities they say they have, but there's no real basis for it. Like for example, Bulwark of Faith takes less damage from the front how much less damage you don't know they don't give you a number you know but these are also so these are pulled out of all of the unit cards and some of them have uh both like you know co uh cover me is the maidens the spearmen and the the spear sergeants all have that right so uh, as you go down the line cover me unit rallies to and defense commander fire resistance less far over thermal weapons versus same era uh heavy armor more difficult to harm so Again, they don't tell you how much, um, but it does give one weak spot. That's for the stalwarts. It's the same as the paladins. It takes 20% damage if attacked from the rear. Um, so these are something that you should take into account when you're kind of trying to decide what unit will I use for what thing. And I'll get into that a little later as well. But look at these because these are going to affect those units, right? So the next slide we're going to look at is what is not covered in the unit cards, but 
is uh, a unit tree or a veteran tree buff to the unit. Okay, so let's take a look at the next slide. Now this slide we're going to spend a little tiny bit of time on because this slide more than the previous slides uh, really give us an idea of what the unit is supposed to be for, right? And um, this slide has everything on it from the unit tree and the veterans tree, as well as the keywords uh, from the, the unit information page that are not reflected on the unit cards raw stats. So these are all plus two, right? Uh, or added, or in the case of the stalwarts, because of weak spot, it's removed. So you'll also notice that um, the keywords are interesting because several units will have uh, several keywords that are the same, like the Spear Charge and the Imperial Spear Guards have heavy armor. Uh, they've also got shield bearers. So these these are important because it sort of gives you an, an idea of what that's for. Like um, shield bearers is reduced, damage is reduced from ranged, right? But unknown percentage, you don't know. So this, this kind of tells you that it's supposed to be a bit of a, a guard, right? Now, if you look at the shield maidens, they have the least amount of bonuses. And now I think that's because they have the most amount of, of uh, stuff that's inside them, right? Because a lot of these other three, uh, a good chunk of them are dependent on, right? Um, so the other thing about these is that we don't know where the starting point is. Like for block, for example, plus 120 block for the shield maidens and the stalwarts have plus 620 block. Now, I know where I get that 620 block. I get it from the the unit tree and the veterancy uh, line. And of course, you get it from the um, the doctrine I added. So it adds up to 620 block, whereas the shield maidens have 120 block. And at first blush, it's like, wow, that's a lot better. However, we don't know where the shield maidens start. Are they starting at 1,000 block? And Stalwitch are starting at 500 block? You, you don't know, but at least it's, a, it's an idea, right? Now... Um, when you're looking at the stalwarts, for example, I'm going to go to the stalwarts because there's not really a, you know, a lot of interesting information. The shield maidens is just basic. But if you look at the stalwarts, you're going to notice that it says plus 15% to formation damage, plus 36% to damage in brace, and plus 10% to damage to unit. Now, um, the formation damage and the damage in brace are dependent upon, right? So are you in a formation? i.e. a non-dispersed formation in the in the in the in the description which means you have to be in either a line or a shiltron or a tortoise you know and uh are you braced so if you get plus 15 percent if you're in a formation plus 30 percent six percent if you're braced and now you get the plus 10 percent damage unit that's from a doctrine right so that's important to know because you need to know from the unit card that you have that basic percentage of damage right and if you hit all the all of those uh, prerequisites suddenly your damage goes up by a fair amount and the same with the spear sergeants right if you look at the spear sergeants they have plus 50 percent damage to cavalry well the star worlds don't get that plus 10 percent formation damage so they get the same thing as the as the stalwarts but five percent less and then it's another 24 percent damage while blocking cavalry so if you have all of these uh, damages that are dependent upon a situation like being braced or in a formation, the natural question is, well, by how much? And how does that compare to, let's say, the premier unit, the shield maidens? So here's a slide where I've taken the stalwarts and I've added everything up and I've based it on, is it stacked or is it not stacked? So you'll notice that the wall damage is, uh, it gets plus 50% while in non-dispersed formation, plus 36% while braced, and plus 10% from the doctrine. Now, not stacked with everything activated, it comes out to 1709.82 damage. Comparing that to the maidens, the maidens get 1072. Now, the maidens also get in a crazy 1567 piercing armor penetration, which will increase their damage as it is, but this is your base, you know. Now, if it is stacked, well, then you have to add it, you know, uh, 1,062 plus 10%, and then you take that, because uh, the first thing that's going to happen is that's from the Doctrine, right? And then the next one is 
1168, and then, well, are going to be information. Yes, bam. So they add that 15%. And then are you braced? And that's the next thing that happens. So you're braced. And then that gives you 1827. But I don't think that's how it works. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, that they wouldn't do that, but maybe they did. So stacked, 1827. Not stacked, 1709 versus the maidens, you know, 1079. So it shows that if you can get everything right, you'll do more damage. Now let's do the same thing with the spear sergeants. So as you can see, they get their plus 10% formation damage, plus 15% damage versus calf, and plus 24% while blocking calf. So I've divided this into like four different categories. So fighting cav in a grand melee. So you're not braced, but you do get that 15% damage versus cav. So you come up to 1345. Fighting cav in a formation. So this is um, not stacked. This is just everything. It's plus 49%. And that brings up to 1743. Fighting non-cav in formation. That's plus 10%. So that gets you 1287. And fighting a hero. Because I got the assassination doctrine on there. 1255. So... Again, if you do all the things right, and you're against, in this case, cavalry, you have a higher damage output by the raw numbers than the uh, maidens, not taking into account, of course, the maidens' extremely high penetration value. But all of these things together can, can kind of make me make a few predictions that may or may not come true. So I would say that the Imperial Spear Guards are an anti-infantry unit that does better versus infantry that is designed to protect uh, ranged units from ranged units or pike units or other units that don't have a shield and a natural um, defense against uh, archers or crossbows uh, against uh, units that that will do that and and one thing I, I can tell you for sure is that imperial spearmen uh, are the uh, the only unit I believe that whenever I shoot at it with my pavise I do very little or no damage at all. So, and that's against crossbows, which where the crossbows are supposed to be able to penetrate the shield, right? So that's what I'll say about the Imperial Spearmen. They're they're a defensive unit designed to protect units that don't have shields because of the big heavy shields and the shield bearers. It all makes a, a larger frontage, uh, while also protecting them from let's say infantry with zero protection from cavalry spear sergeants are kind of the same they're they're designed to protect uh let's say units that don't have shields just like just like the spearmen but their melee advantage is versus cavalry so they may be in a field battle you would use them to protect you know like a pavise unit or something right are they good at it well we're going to find out and the stalwarts and the maidens i would say are kind of like they'll they do both really well, but not as well as the individual units. Now, does this prediction come true? Well, we're going to find out. So let's take a look at a next slide. And I want to talk a bit about wall theory and why you need a wall and what it's for. So as you're getting ready for your match and you're, you're going to pick a unit that you want to use, one of the things you have to ask yourself is what is the primary purpose of a wall? And the answer is really actually kind of simple. It's to stand in front of something. Now, as simple as this sounds, this can be difficult to achieve in solo play. And that's because other players move. You're not coordinated. You go and set up in front of a archer unit and he moves on. You go set up on top of a pike and he moves on before you're ready to. So that's, that's the problem with solo play. Now, other questions you might want to ask yourself are, are you attacking or defending? Are you solo or part of a group? Are you in a siege or a field battle? Are you protecting ranged or melee units? And in, under what conditions? So are you protecting ranged units in a siege battle? Or are you protecting melee units in a field battle, right? So what wall is the best to choose for that? And that's what we're gonna try and answer in these next following uh, uh, video looks. So let's, uh, let's get started with Imperial Spearmen and then move on to the Spear Sergeants, the Stalwarts, and the Maidens. And after each segment, I'll do a little discussion and uh, before I continue on with the next one. So without, uh, without further uh, waffling, let's, uh, let's get started. So we're gonna do some testing first. 
So this is a buddy of mine. He's got his uh, paladins lined up, ready to go. And remember, the, the idea of this is, uh, under test conditions, what happens when a paladin charge hits the wall, right? And remember, you're trying to protect something behind you. So this is important to know. Like, what's going to happen? Well, we, if you've played them enough, you know what's going to happen, but let's just see. Here comes a charge, slams into the wall, knocks him down, does not push through. That's important to know, right? So he pulls him back because that's the first stage. So he doesn't push through. Now, in an extended melee fight, things might be different. And he also didn't use his uh, I'm a short sword, knock everyone down nonsense. But I also didn't use my Clash of Shields, stop the charge nonsense, right? So that's good to know that they can stand to charge like that. So let's take a look how they do in turtle formation, right? So again, he's going to come hammering in. And charge. He does a little better. See that? A little more guys died. So, you know that the the better wall would be, the better formation would be the wall. Now, it's probably because there's less of them to hit. Because remember, he can go through the first and second rank right here, right? So, that's that. So, now let's take a look at uh, Condis. What's going to happen when the Condis hit him? These are probably my favorite silver era charge unit and uh, I use them a lot uh, usually in flanking attacks and as you're going to see the one thing you don't do with them is charge a wall straight on and slam bam the wall doesn't even move so if you're a Condi player you probably already know this but that's that's pretty counterproductive to charge a Condi unit into a, into a wall like this Okay, it's Apple Calvary. So, you probably already know the result, but here's some Amrengar Lancers. Lancers and he's going to do his charge. And you're going to get wrecked. So, so I was, I'm going to go out on the limb here and say that uh, the last thing you want to do is put these in a, in a battle where they can get hit by Calvary. Alright. And I believe these are Keshigs coming in. Yeah, big Keshig charge. And again, no surprise to anyone, whatever the Keshigs hit, they kill. So we can we could we could basically say that they're pretty decent versus uh, infantry, not so good versus cavalry. And 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 that is not a surprise. Like here's another one, just the remainder we thought we'd see how they do in a circle formation. Here's a quick gameplay loop of where they charge, I interrupt, and he doesn't. So here they come, they charge, boom, I interrupt. You'll notice that my guys get back up. Now, I don't do any damage, but the Pavis behind me and the Axe Wielders that come rolling and afterwards do. Right? So they can't get through the wall now. And the Axemen come in, and then that's, that's the end of it. So you can hold the line if you, as long as you can interrupt their charge. You can't, you can't kill them by yourselves, but you can hold the line. Now, this next piece that's coming up right now, here we go. This is what happens when you're trying to protect a range unit. I'll take a list in the face right there. You're trying to protect a range unit, and that short sword guy comes up and knocks you down. And I'm sure with predictable results. Now, this is a good formation. He's in tight. If if you're trying to protect them versus archers, right? But not so good, you'll notice, if if you're trying to protect them versus uh, uh, melee. Right now, again, they stand back up. They stand back up, they get in line, but the damage has already been done. Now, what's this? This is, a, this is how I think is the best way to use them. You're sitting on a point, you've got one of your sides protected by, you know, the castle wall there, and I've got two pike units. Now, you're still going to get wrecked eventually because, you know, that's the entire team coming over the wall there. But the key takeaway of this is watch how long it takes them to break it. Right? So let's, let's, uh, here comes some Iron Reapers. And now they charge too close. They, they didn't get a good run up. They didn't get a good slam. But even so, they couldn't get through the, the pikes. And, uh, the, 
the spearmen are, are keeping any kind of uh, ranged attacks off them, right? And you're going to see a lot of ranged shit come rolling in here. And the the, the spear the spearmen take all that damage, right? You're going to see a, a, a couple of good hits. But oh, there, there's one. Now watch. See how much damage it took? Not a lot, right? And look them try to force that line. Now, one of the mistakes that we did do, and again, not a lot of damage. Big explosion. I'm still there. Pikes are still there. Now, eventually they do break us, but I mean, it takes the whole team to do it. Now, one one of the mistakes we did did do, we were talking about it even before we started, is that we should have put up a cannon first. We even said, let's put up a cannon up, and we never did. And so then I start to try and place one, and, and you just can't get it down. And these big cannons don't really work either. They're, they're just too damn big. I should have put a culvert in there or something. But again, it's taken the whole team to break this formation, right? And even then, look at this. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna survive this. So as a big speed bump, we're doing okay. Now you'll notice I'm not getting any kills at all. Like I had six there. Now at this point, our overhead coverage is pretty much gone. They've killed enough of my spare units. You know, we had some help come in, but uh, again, we've held the point. This was probably a mistake. We move forward a little bit in the next little minute. We're gonna, I'm gonna move forward into that corner, and we probably should have stayed where we were. And now there are two pike units here. Uh, both of my buddies got photobrachio pikes, and they'll usually fa they'll face both ways, and then they'll turn and face where the main attack is coming from. But eventually they come from both sides, and. Uh, we're just, at this point, there's just too few uh, units to, to to keep the pain off, I guess is the best way to put it. So let's just let this play out. And you can still see there's still rounds coming in, but there we go, I move into that corner. See the rain coming in there? Now, unfortunately, there's, there's no overhead cover anymore. And they hit us from behind, because we didn't look. But I guess the, the key takeaway that I'm trying to get at with this particular video is how long it took them to do it, how many teams they need, how many team members they needed to do it, and how much damage can you inflict while doing it. So as the Spearman, obviously, the answer is not so much. And uh, the Pikes actually did a fair amount of damage. So what we have here is what I, is this, this slide here is what I thought Imperial Spear Guard or Spearmen were prior to doing all this, right? So I thought they were anti-infantry, anti-ranged, poor against cavalry, poor against a hero, poor damage output, high defenses, good at defending a point by standing on it, and best at defending a ranged unit. Now, I do have a note here. Can work with the pike unit as the defense from ranged is superior However, once an enemy gets under the pikes, the spear's low damage output makes it difficult to recover. And and I think all of these points are pretty bang on. So I can say that pretty much the, the spearmen here, they offer good protection, good anti-infantry, anti-range protection uh, at the lower leadership cost, right? Um, so let's take a look at, at uh, some recommendations, okay? So if solo, I could say use to defend a point uh, or take one, but it's too slow for anything else. And by taking one, I mean you're basically there to soak up damage while everyone else does the does the heavy lifting in, in the killing aspect of it, right? So trying to defend friendly players is difficult because of no coordination, you know, like he's going to move off on you. Uh, it's best in a siege where the chance of cav is reduced. Now, if you're playing with a group, best at defending range units against artillery and other range units or pikes, and can be played with pikes as they are the same speed while they offer good range protection. Once the infantry are inside the pikes, they they almost they give almost no meaningful damage output. So by that I mean, of course, you know, they 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 just can't seem to kill anything on their own, right? They they need someone else. So um, I would say this is your good option 
if you're in a siege and you're up against uh, infantry and you can keep yourself from being charged by cavalry, uh, they're they're a speed bump unit. They're they're just there to 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 be a speed bump. So let's take a look at the uh, spear sergeants, and you'll see that they're pretty much the same. Only their focus is anti cavalry. All right, so there's my spear sergeants. I'm all lined up. I'm braced, so I get all those bonuses that I'm supposed to get that we discussed in the order slides. Here's an Armagar Lancer unit coming in, and they're in full charge, and they hit. And you can see that they did a good chunk of damage. Uh, only uh, one or two kills there, but they did do a good chunk of damage. I only killed two, but they rode right through, so whatever you were protecting behind there is is dead, right? Uh, now I would I would say that you know that's that's a good chunk of damage that they took but you know it's not ideal. Uh, so this is Keshigs and give them a second to come rolling in. And here they come. And again I embraced all the bonuses and they actually did pretty decent versus the Keshigs, right? So that's a gold cav unit, but a gold sword unit. So definitely better than the than the spearmen, right? But again, they a few of them did die, and this and the Keshigs did go through. So any ranged unit you have sitting behind them is probably dead. Okay, and here's the monastic knights. and they get crushed. So the Hussars, the same thing happens. The, the, the Spear Sergeant just get wiped out. So essentially you can survive versus uh, Lance, uh, sorry, you can survive versus a Purple Lance unit or lower and versus Sword units. And I'm gonna show you a little bit later here, they're gonna actually take a Lao Rangers charge. But uh, versus versus the uh, gold lances, they don't survive at all. So what are we looking at here? Uh, this is um, combat footage from a field battle I did. I, I was setting myself up, hoping someone would charge me with uh, cavalry. But what happened instead is, is I kept getting infantry coming at me, which is why I set up the, uh, the testing, because I had a hard time getting cavalry units to charge me or even the right ones to charge me. But I put this in here because it's going to show something that I think is very necessary. And basically, I'm going to get wiped out. And I'm going to get wiped out pretty easily by a Berserker unit. And it's not a one-off thing. Uh, they just don't do well versus infantry. And it's 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 rather unfortunate, but I mean, when you go down that anti-cav line, uh, you know you, you do get wrecked by infantry. And so you can see that that if you're going to be playing your spear sergeants in a in a, in a cav anti-cav mode, the best thing you can do when one of these guys is coming at you is probably withdraw. You know, and, and I, I'm saying that because I have zero return here, right? Uh, I got wiped out with zero return. And here's another example of the same thing. And this is even worse. Uh, you know, I form up. He forms up. Look at this Condi unit, right? I get I get the balls, but they still they still charge, and they still manage to get into braced units, but they just... Look at that. I just get crushed, right? And then I get kidnapped, and I <laughs> freaking hate those guys. Uh, so I get kidnapped, and I get crushed by, by a Condi unit straight on charge. So that's... You need to be aware of that. That's going to happen. Now, earlier I had gotten uh, uh, charged by Outriders, and, and I had survived the charge. And then they came along, and they and they threw sticks at me and exploded. And uh, I got wiped out by a Hussar unit just rolling right through me, right? So um, I wanted to show this as, as how to convince an Outrider unit to leave you alone. And basically, you got to keep pushing them. Right now, had there been anybody else around me other than this outrider unit, I probably would have got wrecked. But he's going to come up and he's going to start throwing shit at me, and I'm going to push forward. All right. All right. And that's how you, how I drive him off. Um, 
because you got I got to keep avoiding those 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 uh, explosive charges, right? Because if you stand still, he can he can get those off. So I have to go to cover me, and I have to keep pushing, right? Because remember, I do get bonuses, not as many bonuses in a melee with cavalry, right? And and you'll notice that that's okay as long as you're not taking a charge. If you're in a melee with cavalry, you're going to do okay once their charge is complete, right? So again, he's trying to he's trying to to, to to throw at me, and I'm not letting him do it because I keep moving. And that's the other good thing about these spear, spear sergeants is they've got that fast movement speed. Only maidens are faster. And he and he decides he's had enough of this and he's going to leave, right? So here's another melee. And uh, this is uh, verse silver cavalry. And again, I, I do okay. Um, but what the mistake I make here is, I start. I mean, I'm so in it that I lose my situational awareness, and I form up. And what I don't see is a monastic knight's unit, right there. I go to move, and I just get crushed. But it wouldn't have made any difference. Like I was like, oh, I should have been braced at this time, because this is prior to me actually lining up with my buddy and having him charge me. So it wouldn't have mattered, right? Now here's the Lao Rangers. Lao Rangers come ripping in. They charge. What they didn't do is shoot, and they probably should have. That probably would have broke the broke my, my line. But you can see there that um, unless you're Lance Cavalry, they do hold the line. As you call, like Armager Lancers would have gone through. They wouldn't have damaged me overly much. Like I probably would have taken half damage, but they would have gone through. And uh, obviously all the Gold Cavalry would have gone through. And that range unit standing behind me would have been dead. But the Lao Rangers didn't get through. Now... Is that because he didn't shoot? I, I honestly don't know. I, I only have so much time to, to, to test all this stuff. Uh, so we can look at spare sergeants and we can say they're an anti-cav line. Uh, better damage to cav wall in formation. And this is all relative because as we've just seen, some cavalry they can defend against. Some they don't take damage as the cav charge through. Some they do take damage as the tra cav charge through. And some they'll stop and some they won't. So it's... it's uh, it's hit or miss, right? It's probably better to pair them with a pike unit, to be honest. Um, so they're good defense against range. So that means that because of the shield, they can arrows don't do a lot of damage to them. Uh, crossbows do actually go through. Uh, so good hero protection. What I mean by that is, is if you're one on one with a hero, your little murder ball will generally convince him to go elsewhere, unless he has his own infantry unit, because as you can see right next down below that is poor versus infantry. And if you recall, the Condies and the Berserkers ripping them apart, you know. So good at defending a range unit, and and that is from, I mean, from other range units. Like, you can stick a Pavis in the wall line, and they'll tank the damage. Um, now, you'll notice that that, uh, that musket unit behind me, the Janissary unit, he he was smart. He stood back quite a bit. So when the charge did come, you know, first off, his his rounds were doing damage as the charge came in from the Law Rangers, and second, even those Law Rangers that did make it through my wall, they didn't get to him. Right? If he had been a Pavis unit standing in front of it, or standing inside the wall to protect itself against ranged attacks, th those Pavis would have been would have been killed. And it's always tempting as a Pavis player, and I know because I am one, to stand inside the wall. Right, because you can get defense from range that way, but you have to be very cognizant of the fact, as that Pavis player, that as soon as cavalry come on the field, you got to pull back. Right. Uh, so they're good partner with a pike in field battles. Like I, I didn't show this, but it is it is the case. Um, it isn't it isn't the best pairing possible, uh, but they're they are good they are a good anti cav unit together. Although again, their flanks uh, are pretty vulnerable and they're fairly vulnerable versus infantry but as a as a cav anti-cav unit um it's pretty decent okay uh, i don't recommend a caesar to fit a point uh, versus infantry because they're just not that good and let's take a look at my recommendations so as you can see i'm going to say they're difficult to use as in this configuration they're poor against other infantry extra damage is granted versus cavalry but you only get the most out of it if you're braced uh, if you play solo, not recommended to use solo as cavalry can too easily avoid you and infantry too easy to run you down. But if you must play them, ensure you are braced first cav or you'll be run over. Like you're going to take damage from lance and monastic knights anyway, right? You're going to get crushed. 
Now all other cavalry units, like the sword units and stuff like that, the non-lance units are probably going to break through you anyway, but they're not going to do you much damage. But they're going to hit whatever you're trying to protect. Now I've got out this. I got the sign. Watch out for outriders knocking you down, allowing successful lance charge to hit home from a second unit. We know the lance is going to break through. Uh, I would say watch out for a sword charge to hit home because once the outriders knock you down, the swords can probably, you know, wreck you. In fact, I know they can because it's happened to me. Uh, if grouped, pair with a pike unit is an excellent anti-cav pairing. Uh, most cav will avoid you at all costs. Can thus use in an aerial denial mode. While not great against infantry, it does offer better protection versus melee getting through the pikes and an imperial spearman pike pairing. Paired with ranged is good as well as it offers some, ca although not, yeah, decent cavalry protection, although not excellent cavalry protection. I'm going to downgrade that to some cavalry protection. Uh, as opposed to decent cavalry protection. When I wrote this, it was, like I said, I did everything prior to to see what I would find out. Uh, so I would say instead of decent cavalry protection for a range unit, I'll say some, you know, uh, because most units will break past you and just how much damage you and they are going to take when that happens. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on to stalwarts and let's, uh, let's see what I found out there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is uh, Tsarig's charging my braced style unit. And charge. So they did knock a few back. They did, and I know he said he had a ton of damage done to him, but in that first little charge, uh, the Tsarigs did do a fair amount of damage to the the, the stalwarts that they hit. So I would say not too bad versus uh, a straight up charge, but he was damaged quite a bit. Um, and now we're going to do a knockdown. And you'll notice they just go right on through, right? So whatever was behind me is dead. And also, the stalwarts do not uh, automatically go back to their position like the Imperial Spearmen do. If you press one key and tell them to, to form and then, and then brace again, they'll go back to it. But Now, I'm trying the same thing, but they're going to be in... Uh, in the and this is against Paladins, they're going to be in that block mode to see if that matters. So not, not too bad. Uh, they took the charge. And, and you can see that because they're, they've got that depth, you know, even though they were knocked back a little bit, they were able to hold their position. And this is Condi's. And... Condi's a little bit of damage, but nothing too crazy. So they hold the line quite well against infantry. They have a lot of a lot of forward uh, defense that uh, really does um, keep them in the game, so to speak. But again, I wanted to showcase this. Here is that big twenty percent hole that they have. If you're a Condi unit, and this is a Condi unit, and you can get in the back hole. Now you can see they did quite a bit of damage right off the front. Now if they had if they had had a hero charge in with them, and uh, you weren't paying attention, you would be chopped up pretty quick as a stalwart. So keep that in mind, because if a Condi can do that to you, think about what maidens can do to you. Okay, so here are Armengar lancers in wedge formation. So they did a fair chunk of damage. Uh, in the in the wedge area, and they knocked those guys back. So that was pretty decent. I mean, they didn't they didn't take a lot of damage either. Now here's the same Armagar lancers, but now they're going to come in a wide formation. And you can see that I'm not braced, and I just get crushed.
So you should be braced. You'll get you'll have less damage done to you if you're braced. Okay, so this is Stals versus Keshig. And obviously I'm braced. Now you'll see on the initial charge, not a lot of damage done to the Stiles. Wasn't too bad, a lot of damage done to the Kashyyyks. But as the Kashyyyks turns around, they start doing more damage to the Stiles on the way back, right? So I would I would recommend that when they hit, after the initial impact, uh, unbrace and press uh, V for uh, attack at will. That will they'll turn their shields to the, to the Kashyyyks and they won't take that rear damage. Okay, so let's look at some match footage. So... This is uh, a stalwart Fortabachian Pike pair, uh, and I actually believe that this is probably the best pairing you can get. Stiles are too slow to keep up with Paladins. There's no, there's no real, um, you know, charge ability. They do have that advance ability, but that's down the other line. So if you're in this line, uh, I would say pair them with a Pike unit. Now you see these guys climbing up there. Eventually they're going to come this way. And I'm going to make him come this way because I, I, I'm going to shoot a cannon at him. Because once they notice us over here, they're going to start coming over here. And they just noticed us and they're going to come. But the whole reason I put the cannon down was to was to convince them that I, I'm, I'm some lady that they have to deal with. So here's their crap spears are coming in, and they're they're going to get wrecked by the by the pikes. You can see them getting wrecked there. But again, these are just straight up demony. Now this is Conqueror City, and this is actually a pretty good spot. Um, you are nukable, but it's it's uh, it's a hard shot, right? And you're going to see it, the shot come in, and they're not going to do enough damage. You see, we got them stymied. They're not entirely sure what to do right yet, <laughs> and, and that's that for that guy. Because <laughs> again, the, unlike the spearmen, once they get through the pikes, well, they've got the brace stalwarts to deal with right and look and there goes that mall he's trying to kidnap someone but again the the stalwarts are are killing heroes and that's what you want Attack! now we just had two friends join us he was actually saying oh, i'm going to bring some ball guys down and here comes the ball guys and here comes the nuke right but again you notice this little spot it does miss uh we, we had a little bit of damage but but uh we're two long swords so we can heal this up pretty good and again, I reform because once they get knocked down, because they're they're braced, they stay they stay where they were knocked to, right? And here comes an axe unit, so they're a little bit more beefier. And some iron caps, and the axe unit changes his mind at the moment. But. Again, the heroes are like, well, what do we do? Like they do eventually break through, but it's it's something they really got to put an effort into. And again, the styles are ec excellent because now I'm going to brace again, because I can offer that that uh, I can offer that under the pike protection as well as the the overhead protection and you'll notice that when when they when they managed to knock him back my clash of shields was able to to stop that that push I wind up moving up to that top of those stairs and taking on the whole team and getting getting crushed of course but uh, in the interest of moving on, because I've shown what I want to show there, 
Uh, here is Pikes and uh, Stalls pushing a point, and this is why I think they're they're much better than than Imperial Spear Guards and Pikes pushing a point, especially when you're attacking because you don't have to worry about uh, trebuchets as much. And I say as much because I've had my own team nuke my little Pike and Stahl set up on numerous occasions, and uh, that does cause me to rage a little bit. But so this is this is the start. We're going to push to the top of the uh, uh, the stairs. And again, if you've seen my uh, Spear Star, uh, Peanut Butter and Jam videos, you will see a much more in-depth study of this particular tactic. But we're just going to continue to like baby step in until the pikes can, can reach. I should have moved down there at the time, but I, I that was a slight mistake I had made. But we're going to move in anyway. And you see I brace, he braces, they're gone. Not a lot of damage done. I could have gone in a few, like a 10 seconds earlier when I when I knocked those guys down. But I hadn't uh, I hadn't actually thought of that at the time. I was trying to get that, that hero. Uh, now I skipped over that because it was just like a, 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 a crap fight. There was like... Um, like some surfs in there or something, so it's nobody wants to see that. But again, this is us at the at the point now. Uh, Lancer saves my butt, and now we're going to hold it, and we're going to hold it way better than an Imperial Spearman Pike Wall could, because again, being able to uh, protect the pikes under the under the pikes is good. Now the third player with us, uh, he's using the, the Paladins there. Now again, because you're the Stalwart and you're under the Pikes, you're not getting as much kills as you could have if you were just, you know, your own thing, because the Pikes are taking them, right? But it's like, you know, it's like a layered defense. They hit the Pikes first, they break past the Pikes, they hit the Stalls, right? And, and this is a teamwork kind of play style, you know? So you're not going to get as as many kills as the stall, but I, I guarantee, or sorry, as the pike, but I guarantee you, you're going to have a lot of fun, and you're going to you're going to hit your objective. Okay, so here's a second example of uh, pushing an an, uh, an objective. We're, we're coming across, and we immediately notice that we're about to get hit from behind. So I brace, and then the pikes come in and uh, brace on top of me. And we're now holding, uh, oh, and the, and the hammer comes, and we're now holding the the point or the we're holding the 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 beachhead, so to speak. But you'll notice that uh, while I did have some damage done to me from the, uh, the the grenades, and I was knocked back, it wasn't uh, an impressive amount. Like it wasn't a, a, a you know a debilitating amount. We were able to hold that off. And uh, using that leave hours, you're able to push through. Now this is a very much contested. So again, we're gonna we're gonna push our way in. All right, those are palace guard. He steps forward just to, just far enough for his pikes, and he steps forward. I step forward. Or sometimes we go the other way too. It depends depending on who you want to be able to, to uh, whether or not you can you you're able to move in without getting interrupted. But it's very hard to, to push through that pike stalwart wall as a, as a, as a hero. And uh, now Big Mac is using his uh, Imperial Pike Guards. So that's another really good pairing is the Pike Guards with Port of Accu Pikes with Stalwarts. Very, very, very hard to, to beat that. And we use it offensively. And that's, that's the weird part. You, you know, these are a defensively designed unit and we're using it offensively. Now here's here's something that 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 uh, you should be aware of. Uh, we get completely wrecked going around a corner, uh, and we get wrecked because there's flamethrowers and uh, grenade grenade guys and for wreck your cannons, and so 
just be aware that you know ultimately the battlefield uh, dynamic has changed to the point where there's so much crazy you know pyrotechnics going off that I, I can't I couldn't even see right so we're trying to get push around the corner and uh, we just you, you can't get around that damn corner so our mistake here was when the, when there's that kind of pyrotechnics coming at you you should probably back off and try and find another way in but we just kept trying to push this corner and it wasn't uh, it wasn't advisable at all but look at this flame coming in there I mean I just couldn't see like the you know so we said fuck it we gotta push forward and then we pushed right into the, the muskets the crossbows the archers the you know you name it and we just there was no <laughs> there was there was no way we were just getting wrecked so uh so stalwarts right so uh, we, we can say that they're excellent anti-infantry they're adequate versus lance cavalry you know they're going to take damage good versus sword cavalry uh poor against hero so like the hero can avoid you you're you're pretty slow uh good damage output wall brace and information they have a high defense good at seizing our defending point in fact i'd almost say they're excellent at it especially if they're working with pikes right uh can defend range but lacks the shield bearers trait uh that that allows the the, the spear sergeants and the in the imperial spearmen do, to do it better and of course they have that big defensive hole in the rear so if you're going to um you know if you're going to get hit from the back you know fucking unbrace and turn because you're going to take damage if, if you can if you can okay so recommendations so it is a very easy and forgiving unit to use as long as you remember to protect your rear uh solo it's it's good solo it's good to help uh defend or muscle onto a point uh, advancing in and bracing will encourage other players behind you to push in uh, once braced, charge infantry units take large amounts of uh, damage assaulting. Uh, however, if the unit uh, it knocks knocked back, the bots do not filter back to the original position unless you unbrace them. This can be a problem if they are knocked back too far. Uh, the unit is slow, do not wander far from the main zerg. So uh, basically, as you saw with the with the tests when when the the sword infantry comes in and, and knocks them back they just stay where they are and as you saw it in the gameplay footage same thing so it becomes a a choice of do i unbrace and allow them to reform or do i or is it more beneficial to leave them where they are and you know that's that's a pretty easy thing to see because if you're shrouded in bots don't unbrace uh so group play it's excellent group play uh, especially paired with a pike unit or a sword infantry charge unit uh but in that case, it's it's going to be a case of uh, they charge out of the house, they come back into the house, right? Um, and your and the sword infantry has to move at your pace, not the other way around. Uh, Forty bar pikes in tight square fit inside the stalwart shiltron. Uh, once braced, the shiltron can easily kill whatever gets under the pikes. If paired with a sword unit, they can also allow the sword unit uh, place a charge out of and retreat to, like I just said. Or the sword unit can charge in to break them up while the stalwarts advance and brace very effective for taking a point but again the sword unit has to walk with the styles and uh so let's take a look at maidens okay so here is the maidens versus monastic knights and they're going to be in the wedge formation and they're going to they're going to charge right in and wow not a lot of damage now i didn't kill any of them either but there wasn't a lot of damage done. And if you contrast that with the Spear Sergeants who got absolutely wrecked, it just goes to show that the bonuses that the Spear Sergeants get does not take them up to the base that the Maidens are at. So here's some Hussars. They're gonna charge through. And now they did a lot better than the, than the uh, Monastic Knights did. But you'll notice that they didn't kill very many of them, right? A lot, a lot of, a lot of them damaged pretty good, but they didn't die. Now the other problem is obviously they went straight through. So here comes some Keshigs, and the hit, and they did okay where they hit. Now obviously if they do the whole straight through and come back thing, but uh, at that point you should probably turn your your maidens around or something, but. 
But again, the cake, the the maidens seem to be standing up quite well to gold cavalry. Uh, they don't stop them. They do still ride through. So anything you're trying to protect is going to get wrecked. Uh, but they don't take a crazy amount of damage when they're braced like this. Now, um, here's an Armengar Lancer unit. And they're going to come straight in. And the maidens weren't, were barely even touched. Barely touched. So versus purple lance cavalry, the maidens do quite well. And like I said, versus the spear sergeant, you would think, you know, with all the spear sergeant bonuses, that they would be a lot better than they are, but they're not. The maidens obviously are a much better unit in that regard. Now here's some gameplay footage. I'm actually going to play them as a wall now. Uh, so I'm trying to defend uh, Lancer's Pavis. And uh, Big Macs, for that matter. So they've got two Pavis units here. I've got a nice long wall. And I do have a, a, a big shield, uh, you know, coverage. So that, you know, uh, range coming in is, is going to probably hit the shield versus hitting my uh, hitting the, the Pavis I'm trying to protect. But, I mean, I kind of consider this a waste, you know. Like, I mean, you've got this big badass unit and you're using it as a, as a block. I think for the price... You know, for the price, you know, a, a, a you know, a stall unit is better, or a spearman unit is better. You know, simply on the price. But I mean, are they better? Yes. Oh yeah, hands down, they are better. But I mean, is it really worth a three hundred plus point unit to be sitting there? That's something you're going to have to figure out for yourself. Now, granted, I am protecting two Pavis units, so maybe, maybe they are. And we just keep inching forward, letting the letting the Pavis work. And again, we've got two uh, two long sword here, so we just keep healing. That that also helps keep you in the in the fight a little bit longer. Is is that long? <laughs> Maul kidnaps Maul. That's that's like hoisted by your own petard there. The irony. The irony. I'm actually not going to put it down. I'm just pretending to so that they feel threatened. Now, nobody came after us now. Do they not come after us because there's a shield meeting sitting, unit sitting there? Although I am getting hit by, by artillery fire. But again, I'm taking it quite well, if you look. Like, I'm taking the hits. My line is still extended. Uh, we went back and, and uh, uh, rearmed. And then we decided we were, were going to have to push the, push the point. So they grabbed their pike units. So this is now maidens with pikes. Same battle, same point. But we figure we got to do the push, so we, we push in. Look at this crazy guy with his long long bows in there. That's just crazy. Now, like I said, to me this is it's almost a, a waste because like maidens are really expensive. Can they do this? Are they good at it? Yeah, of course they are. But they're really expensive to, to use as a as a meat shield. But they do make a good meat shield if you're willing to spend the points on it. Now I answer didn't see these monastic knights coming in or he wouldn't have moved. And even though I was in the middle of moving and not braced when I got hit, you'll notice I took pretty heavy damage, but I didn't die. Like, the, the, the bots didn't die. So I was able to reform and start healing them again. Uh, but I, I didn't obviously didn't see them either, because if I had seen them, I would have stayed braced. But I moved off of him. Uh, but like, look at the paladins coming in, the charging in. And the pikes are doing work, and I am just sitting under the pikes, right? So... 
to me, the, the maidens would be better off being in there doing work on their own, but that's not their job right now. I'm using them to protect the pike force. And we finally get it. But, uh, so can they do it? Yeah, absolutely they can do it. Is it worth losing however many I lost? Like five or six, I think I can see. Uh, to, to, to protect the pikes to take the point? Stalwarts probably would have been just as good, right? Or, or, or better. Although the Stalwarts would have been, uh, cr uh, you know, run over pretty good by those monastic knights because they wouldn't have been braced. They would have been crushed. All right, so here's a bit of solo play. And they're going to... I think I'm going to charge over here. Yeah, here we go. So there's that charge buff. When I hit... Now remember, I'm, I'm, I'm a spear... Uh, you know, a, a spear build. So I switch back to spear and I go to cover me. And then I use the, the defense buff. And the styles come up, right? So they're really good offensively, solo, even with the spear, uh, spear build, because of that cover me, right? Especially the extra thirty percent, uh, you know, pen. Once you get far enough down the line that you get that thirty percent penetration with your spears, you're going to do decent damage. Okay, so. This is like maybe three minutes later, I'm just sitting there waiting. And they once again start to climb up the wall, and I can see them moving in position. So I charge. Hit my knightly vows, front rank, got it, no one else did. There's one kill for the player. And that was obviously in sword mode. So I, I put the I put the um, the formation on top of these guys so that the maidens will all pile in. And then I switch back to spear and I go in to cover me, right? And then, obviously, we got the, st the stalwarts helping me out. But I keep pushing forward, right? They're, they're very good at this. Especially in cover me, of course. <laughs> and then the flamers come in. Give it a good uh, defensive buff. Take that guy to the wall. He's dead. Like I said, cover me with maidens is just... It's really good. And I charge this guy now. This is good. I got my clash of shields back up, and boom, and I go. And this is like, uh, this is an eight to minute run. Like, I'm not, uh, at this point, I've decided I'm not stopping, right? I'm not going to try and reset. So I'm going to go to the last maiden dies. And I'm switching back and forth between swords and uh, uh, spears to use those those abilities, right? Now, the spear is obviously uh, the more damage doing because I've got that extra 30% to piercing pin. Uh, but we're going to push through. We're going to take on these uh, palace guard. And I got the help with the stalwarts behind me. Right, but he's not braced. He's just, you know, on attack. At well, here comes a charge. I try to get set for it, and that's that is pretty much the end of me. But overall, it was a pretty decent run. I mean, you can see that that they're, you know, they're they're a beefy unit, right? And they should be for 300 points. So shield maidens. Well, what are some points? They can buff other units. They got good anti-cav abilities. Good anti-infantry abilities. Good against hero, good at defending a range unit, good damage output versus cavalry and infantry, assuming you're in a general melee. Uh, decent if partnered with a pike. However, Shiltron cannot entirely cover the pikes because you don't have the full top cover. And you give up the maiden's superior mobility if you're running with a pike unit. Can Caesar defend a point? Uh, while maidens do work well with other players, it is also an excellent solo play unit. All right, some, some recommendations. So, solo. Excellent solo play unit. I love this unit solo. Uh, it's mobile enough to get around, and the cover protects you quite well. Uh, use the buffs to assist other units as they try to take points. Personally, I think that the unit is too valuable to throw it away on a solo ramble run. Uh, and don't forget, you also have the sword and charge abilities, so use them as well, as they are quite effective. So uh, I would use it like I usually use these kinds of units, which is a, a uh, you know hit-and-run kind of style. But because of going down the, the, the spear line as opposed to the sword line, which is where I usually run, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, my my in me lee is, is a little beefier, right? Because I that, that cover me, the spear 
can now do way more damage to to the hero. So uh, group play. Maidens can essentially do all the things, but why would you want to? They are too valuable to be used as a speed bump protecting another unit. While they are good overall, the other units can be better at a singular aspect than maidens. I no longer believe that. Uh, I did when I wrote this because I looked at all the bonuses, but I don't believe that anymore. I think uh, other than the, the, the stalwarts being better uh, against uh, infantry and cavalry charges, uh, this, the spear sergeants, just, they just can't handle what the maidens can do um, because they get run over by gold units and the maidens don't. Um, so I put here, for example, the ISGs are much better range support than the maidens. This is kind of true. Uh, and while the maidens can do it, why would you waste the 320 points to babysit a range unit? Even if that range unit is Pavis. So again, that's that's kind of like six of one half dozen other. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, but I, I considered back then when I was writing all this, because I, I was, you know, maidens have better things to do, better to pair them with another maiden or sir unit and use that mobility. Now, when I, when I wrote all of these things, I, I looked at all the stats and I thought, Okay, this is how everything should play out. Is this how it actually does play out? And after I played everything out and, and did all the testing, uh, you know, I found that, you know, it, a lot of it wasn't quite the case. Like, even though I buffed the living hell out of the spear sergeants, the spear sergeants just don't take a charge like the maidens do. You know, and, and if you recall that slide where it showed all the extra bonuses the, the spear sergeants get, the maidens still take a charge better. Now, Obviously, that's because the maidens start out at a better at a better base uh, stat than the spear sergeants do. Uh, so anyway, this was a long, long, long video to do, and I hope you stuck with me to the end, and uh, I hope you get something good out of this. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.